Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and by afternoon, I mean one o'clock in the morning. Good morning, everyone. LX Starcraft here, bringing you guys another Starcraft 2 commentary. This is going to be game two in this best of three series from the group stages of this past weekend's Red Bull Battlegrounds tournament in Austin, Texas. 16 players, invite only, round robin pools. Everyone plays everyone. Top two from each of the four pools advance into a bracket. Uh, a championship bracket, and I believe it was one of those formats where it's like player one from pool A, or first from pool A, plays second from pool D, first from pool D, plays second from pool A, and same with B and C. And then, of course, things end up happening, and there is indeed a winner, which I might show you later on, but we have two very, very good Zerg players who did very, very well this weekend from what I've heard. But, of course, when you put two really good players next to each other and have to see how they do... It is quite a toughie. So we did see in the last game a very interesting game where both players were actually not really mining at the end or for like any of the game. It was just like the armies they had at the 15 minute mark were the, uh, were the armies they had when the game ended. We're going to have to see, are we going to see something similar this game? But we already see a bit of a departure. We see Violet, of course, not building a... Uh, gas meaning is not going for that 14 14 is going to go ahead and throw up an expansion violet however opting to go what am i saying violet doing hatch for stefano opting for that 14 14 that is of course the 14 extractor drone 14 spawning pool and that of course gives you 100 gas right around when your spawning pool pops this is a very uh it's a staple zerg build has been used for a very long time and uh, is definitely used in Zerg versus Zerg, I'd say is one of the three common openers. The three common openers being the quote-unquote rock, paper, scissors of Zerg versus Zerg, which isn't really true. But it's essentially uh, the three builds would be hatch first, 1414, or early pool. And either one can provide a very, very excellent game. So we do see Stefano, his link speed is going to be started momentarily. He does have that queen on the way now as well. So what is he going to do? He does not leave guys in gas. You see Stefano not missing a beat, not mining even a gas extra. I always do that. I'm like, I'm going to pull off gas on 100. Then I look up and I have like 350 because I was trying to not die to the banelings at my front. And I'm like, wonderful. Those could have been Zerglings, couldn't they? And then I lose the game. But of course, Violet, much, much better than me. He is doing a great job. Stefano as well, of course, the Frenchman that everybody loves. And we do see Violet, of course, with a slight drone lead right now, which would generally happen when you go for that hatch first. Of course, Stefano does have the queen up earlier. You see his is complete and has injected, while Violet's are still about 35 seconds from being finished. He actually starts another queen at his main, and this will, of course, allow him to inject in this hatchery as soon as it does pop. And of course, sending about six Zerglings across the map, and this is something you always see 14 14 ing players do. They send these six Zerglings out just to maybe force their opponent to get a few more Zerglings than they might like, throw down a spine, be a little more defensive with their queens, maybe not optim uh, injecting quite optimally. And so, of course, Stefano's going to have to see, can he do anything with these? But Violet, already with the Queen and the Spine Crawler, it's probably not going to take much damage from this. But Stefano's speed is going to finish in about three seconds. And one thing to definitely note in the production tab, we see no Baneling Nest for Stefano. We saw no Baneling Nest for Stefano. Violet walling off the ramp. He is going to get a drone, though, so that's a nice little pickup for Stefano. And you see, he's only ahead by two drones. If he hadn't killed that, he'd only be ahead by one. And he stopped the other one mining for quite a bit. It just did manage to get back, and Stefano is just going to run right out out of there but i wanted to note we did not see a banding nest which meant stefano was just doing some purely um i'd say innocent ling aggression he was not doing this and then had a whole bunch of banelings in the background uh ready to go ahead and try an all in violet and violet speed is now done as well so stefano gonna be in some trouble getting out of here we see both players apm hovering around 250 and of course that is blazing particularly in this blizzard apm that uses blizzard seconds which are faster than normal person seconds so of course that means their apm is even higher than that displays these people's fingers fly across the keyboard. And here we go. Stefano does have a bane in us now. It is purely defensive, I'd imagine. He himself is going to be going ahead and walling off his ramp with the queens. That is a common strategy just to make sure that your opponent does not do a run-by into your main where you do not have spines, where you might not have banelings. And that is, of course, 
very dangerous. So Violet sitting out here, warping in, and by warping, I mean morphing in two banelings. And Stefano sending out his links. Is he going to be able to do anything with these before they are complete? It looks like no, they are going to pop. And Stefano is immediately going to pull away. Does not want to lose all his Zerglings through this banelings. Splitting up his banelings, which is, of course, a very nice thing to do. And then setting them out. And this is actually one of the most effective ways to trade banelings. Because, you know, two banelings kill two banelings. But if you spread them out like that, they cannot get a whole, they cannot get more than two bane links with two bane links. Ideally, they can only get one bane link with two bane links. And you guys did not see that replay timeline right there. Totally ignore it, okay? And if you saw it, it probably wasn't long enough. Just focus on the game, okay? We see both players with their lair underway, about halfway complete, a little bit further behind for Violet. Looks like Stefano is trying to snipe that overlord, but instead just going to be forcing it away. He, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, let's let's skip back forward. Where were you? We were right around here. How are their layers? Uh, okay, so Stefano's layer about halfway done. Okay, this works. Stefano currently at the two extractors, one of the main, one of the natural. Not be surprised to see him throwing up more. And now, while the banelings do kill quite a few of the zerglings right there, Violet goes ahead and makes it up into the main, tries to pick off a drone, but does not. All he really wanted to do was scout them. We see Violet throwing down three of his gases. He did have one already mining for quite a while. So he might be going for this Mutalisk play once more. He did try to do that or started to do that last game, I would say, but did not do a whole lot of work with it and was forced to transition into Roach and Fester fairly quickly. We're going to have to see, can he make anything more work with it in this game? Uh, simply because uh, Muta Ling is very, very difficult to play against as a Roach and Fester player, a Roach Hydra and Fester. And if it's done properly, it's almost impossible. I've certainly seen Stefano crumble to it before, and I've seen many other pro Zergs do it as well. So we do see Stefano right here. Ooh, gets some huge baneling hits on Violet's guys. And he does see the exact timing of the third, and he immediately forces a cancel on it from Violet and kills the drone. So nice little pickup from Stefano right there. And we see his uh, third is now automatically going to be upwards of 60 seconds ahead of his opponents but violet is throwing down a spire and he's actually throwing down a roach warrant at the same time you usually see the roach warrant come later but of course it does not take gas i'm not going to detract from that mutilus count really since of course gas is what you will be limited by and we do see violet going to be trying to expand again with the drone right there and he has banelings in position to help defend against them he does not want to have him lose that third again looks like they do get a hit but stefano actually did manage to kill those banelings he might go ahead and try and kill that again violet with a lot of links at the front and that pure link count by itself is probably telling stefano well okay he's gonna be going for uh, Muta Ling. And that's why we see two queens in production. Of course, the infestation pit started very soon. And is Stefano going to be able to hold his own third? That is the question. This is a lot of Zerglings. And you see these hatcheries fall very fast. Zerglings do crazy damage. And we see Stefano with a few Lings trying to focus that down. A few more streaming in. And it looks like Stefano is going to be able to save this because it is have about 400, 350 health left. And yes, he is going to be able to clean that up. So nice for him. He has a third far before Violet has one of his own. And that infestation pit is about finished. Would not be surprised to see him saturating that with drones very soon. We do see five in production. Wants to get those gases up immediately. And we do have... Uh, did we have mutas? Okay, we have two mutas on the way. Does he have any others anywhere else on the map? We see two on the way. And okay, we see two on the way with a total of five. And it looks like Violet, he did have a six last game. Ended up five because uh, he lost one fairly early. And so it looks like he actually likes doing damage with just maybe five or six Mutalisks. And then transitioning fairly early. He has actually seven this game. But we see him not making any more. Immediately just making Roaches and Banelings. And we see Stefano sending down these Queens. And between two Queens and four Spores. Oh my god, is he going to save this? Ah, it is 11 health left. Clutch transfuse, another clutch transfuse, and Stefano saves his third. The mutas are going to fly back in, but they're going to die way too quick to do any damage versus those. And oh my goodness, Stefano. With the very clutch open, now they're going to be banelings running and do they get it? Yes, they do. Stefano throwing down a last second transfuse, but at the same time, there's a big Ling Roach Baneling battle going down here. Stefano may be trying to kill his opponents there, but unfortunately was not able to do so. So now we suddenly see Violet with the lead. He's behind on workers, but we are going to see his gas income go ahead as soon as he chooses to get these gases. And of course, he has that extra larva provided by that base. Stefano throwing down a macro hatch in his main because he says like, okay, holy crap, I need more larva. Violet is already having one completed. Stefano actually with a rather poultry army. If we take a look at the army supply really quick, we see he's actually only a little behind Violet and a tiny bit ahead or now behind on worker supplies. So we see their supplies very, very close to each other. Both players running around the map with their lings, hovering around 150 
8 p.m. each. Very, very good multitasking coming out of both these players. And Stefano with these two queens, it did quite a lot of damage and it worked crucial in holding that third. But unfortunately for him, it did fall. He does have Infestors now, though. So if any more Mutas venture into his realm, guaranteed they will be dealt with swiftly by the Hammer of Justice. And there we go. One good fungal coming out on those Roaches. They are going to go ahead and kill that Spine Crawl. All the Zerglings dying to those, um, that one Baning. Now he throws out a bunch of Infested Terran and immediately pulls the Infestors back. He does lose a one Queen to those Roaches, so unfortunate. But he may be able to pick that off. Violet, these Roaches going to be running forward. Actually, of their own accord, that was not Violet doing. You did not see him select it, but he is going to be losing those Roaches. So now Stefano does have a third of his own mining. Violet just now getting up the gas. Stefano getting up one immediately as well, with a second going to be close in production. So he's not going to be very far behind on that gas income, at least not for long. And once again, getting a pretty dang quick hive. And does he have any Roaches? Stefano, once again, not getting any uh, roaches. So very interesting decision from here right here. I'm actually uh, going to look at this, maybe consider doing it in my games. But the thing is, when you're not getting roaches and your opponent is doing this with 1-1 one, one and speed about to finish and 2-2 two, two about to finish. Oh, they do have speed. And 2-2 two, two about to finish. It's pretty tough to hold this with only Lings and Infestors. Now we see some great positioning right here, but the Lings, they just don't do that much damage to the Roaches because the Roaches have armor. Looks like Violet is going to be attacking in here now, forcing the cancel on all those Swines, and that is huge. The Swines would have done so much damage right there. And now he's going to be poking at the main as well. And you see all these things attacking the Roaches, and they just can't get through. You see they only do 7 damage on attack with that plus 2, but with the... Uh, armor of the Roaches, plus two armor, total armor of three, they only do four damage a hit, and that is not a lot of damage. The Roaches are going to be trying to run into the main as well. Stefano trying to fung with them on the ramp, but unfortunately, they get in, they see the hive timing, they kill the queen, and his third is under heavy fire as well. He's making a bunch of Zerglings, his hive is now complete, but the uh, Roaches are going to be focusing down drones, and look at the wave of reinforcements on the mini-map, that wave, of course, coming with a fresh round of larvae coming off those injects from Violet, who's no doubt staying on top of them, and oh my god, the supply. 13 Roaches in production for Violet, bringing him to 200 supply. Stefano at 82. So that was a very interesting game right there. It seems like they were very even until about three minutes ago, and then all of a sudden, this happened. So some great uh, innovation, I would say, coming up from Stefano, doing a Ling and Fester into a very fast hive here. Uh, of course, a very gas light until that late game, saving up for it. But, you know, when your opponent just goes roaches and just attacks you, uh, proving to not be quite as strong as one might like. So the players are now tied at 1-1. These players are going to be fighting in the pools, possibly for their life in the tournament. So go ahead and join me in game three. Click the little box at the bottom, and I'll see you guys there.